ना मैं बसंती गीत हूँ ना हूँ मैं बजता साज मैं हूँ अपने घुंघरुओं की एक मद भरी आवाज लाइन्स दैट डिपिक्ट एंड डिस्क्राइब पद्म भूषण श्रीमती कुमुदिनी लाखियाज सर्विस टू कथक ऑफ ओवर सिक्सटी ईयर्स विथ ऑल द स्वेट ब्लड टीयर्स एंड ट्राइम श्रीमती कुमुदिनी लाखिया क्रिएटिव डायरेक्टर कदम सेंटर ऑफ डांस अहमदाबाद गुजरात is the pioneer of contemporary choreography in one of the most ancient dance forms of the world she was the one who introduced the concept of group choreography in this dance form which is today regarded as classic and is an inspiration to many a novel approaches to this dance form today in conversation with shrimati kumudini lakhia at this very beautiful house of hers amra kadam we seek to learn more about her work her life kadam her school her choreography her productions her achievements and her approaches and perspectives and more about this creative personality that is shrimati kumudini lakhia known very fondly to one and all as kumi ben kumi ben uh, your service to dance is now over a span of almost 60 years when you began as a student and then moved on to began became a performer a soloist and uh, finally a choreographer a teacher so kumi ben we are keen to know that how when and why did this journey begin actually i be began even before i became a student mm -hmm. when i was uh, almost forced into learning dance by my mother i belong to a maharashtrian family where uh, every child every girl at least has mm -hmm. to go to a dance class music class mm -hmm. or a painting class mm -hmm. they have to do something other than just the academics mm -hmm. so i was uh, sent to a dance class mm -hmm. uh, I don't know why at that time, mm -hmm. but um, I suppose uh, they saw something in my movement mm -hmm. that they thought maybe I'll be able to dance. Mm -hmm. And my mother always claimed she is going to be a great dancer. I don't know why, but <laughs> later I br I was brought up in Allahabad, where my father was okay. uh, posted. Mm -hmm. And in Allahabad, there the The, the sangam of the two rivers mm. you see the ganges and the yamuna flowing mm. and mm. in the evenings we used to go on picnics mm. where on the boat in the yamuna and those beautiful lights in the river and the music mm. which was all sort of either thumri or ghazal or uh, north indian uh, avadhi uh, folk songs mm. and that somehow didn't match with bharatnatyam it isn't with the bharatnatyam costume or with the movement or with the language language plays a very important role in the dance and we spoke hindi in up even though we are a maharashtrian family living in up we used to speak hindi everyone spoke hindi and that is the language of the kathak dance okay see and so you know kathak became a kind of part of the daily life hmm. of understanding hmm. you know hmm. and bharatnatyam seemed very different in its uh, hmm. form now here i can tell you hmm. the difference okay and why kathak and why bharatnatyam hmm. hmm. you know if you ask somebody today hmm. what forms of indian dance are there they would rattle off you know bharatnatyam kathak kuchipudi kathakali manipuri odissi chhau but actually there are two forms of indian dance mm -hmm. you know that the dance evolved in the temples and the temples means mm -hmm. the uh, worship of gods absolutely and kathak and in our hindu religion mm -hmm. there are two gods who are dancers mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. one is shiva mm -hmm. the nataraja 
and one is Krishna, the Natavar. Mm. Nata means performer. The, the root word Nata means performer. So Nataraj and Natavar. So they are both the dancers. So in the north of India, which is right Bengal, Odisha, UP, and right down to Gujarat, you know, mm. it's Natavara Bhumi. Mm. We are all uh, devotees Krishna of Bhumi. Krishna. This is all Krishna Bhumi, yeah. you know. Even in the in our garbas, mm. all our songs are Krishna. Yes. So the all the dance forms, which evolved in North India, mm. hmm, are the Krishna dances. Mm. Meaning, mm. the philosophy of the Vaishnavites mm. and the philosophy of the Shaivites mm. had a very strong influence on the pattern, everyday pattern mm. of life and also of uh, and also the structure of the dance mm. like in Bharatanatyam you will see mm. that the, you know the whole form of the dance mm. is all very linear yes and in Manipuri, Kathak mm. hmm, it is all very sort of circular like this circular mm. so linear and circular one can say that if one is like the mountain mm. The other is like the river. Oh. Both have their own uh, importance in our mm. life and in understanding nature. Mm. Yeah. So the dances which grew up in the Shaivite region mm. are different from the dances that grew up in the Vaishnava Vaishnav mm. region. In Gujarat also, this is Vaishnava Bhumi. Absolutely. Absolutely Vaishnava Bhumi. And because I lived mostly in in this part of the world, mm. I grew up with a kind of Vaishnava philosophy. Okay. And that is why I felt m closer to Kathak, okay. closer to the music which is associated with Kathak, mm. closer to the costume which is associated mm. with Kathak, mm. closer to the language which is. Mm. So that is why I chose Kathak. Kovevan, that was a wonderful explanation of Indian dance, your perspective of it. What I would like to know is that uh, you were brought up in a non-dancing but a very liberal family. Uh, what I've read about you is that you learned badminton and you were also going to a boarding school in those days. So you have seen the Raj times, the pre-independence times and you have also seen the post-independent times as a performer or as uh, being trained in Kathak during do those times. So how would you uh, sort of uh, talk about the transition phase of Kathak from or your experiences with Kathak from the pre-independence time to the post-independence times? You know, we always consider our classical art forms mm -hmm. as living arts. Mm -hmm. They are the living art forms. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? It means that they must live with the people mm -hmm. and with society. Mm -hmm. They must all the time relate to, mm -hmm. connect with. Mm -hmm the uh, changing, the changes that place, take place in society also mm. because they have to be understood, mm. they have to have a meaning for the mm. people outside the stage Absolutely. and uh, before independence as mm. you are asking, mm. there was, we learnt Kathak mm. and when we went on the stage we did it exactly as we learnt it, mm. there was no changing or of what the gurus taught us. It was just a repetition of what we learnt. Okay. After independence, mm. people started mm. thinking that there should be little independence in the dance also. Mm. So they started creating their mm. little uh, movements mm. in the dance mm. and little stories in the dance. Mm. But that was a very small beginning, very small okay. beginning. Mm. By the time I finished mm. my training in Kathak, mm. which was in 1958. Mm. Uh, I wanted uh, an interpretation of the dance. Okay. I want because interpretation is very important. Mm. You learn something, mm. and you ask the guru. But you know, in the guru shishya parampara, mm. there is no room for questioning. The gurus do not like to be questioned, mm. whatever the reason. Mm. We won't go into the reasons here mm. just now but uh, they don't like to be questioned mm. and so a lot of my questions were unanswered. Mm. 
Now the only person who could answer them was me myself. Mm -hmm. So I started to look at Kathak in different. You know, as children we are, we, we hear a story mm -hmm. of the elephant mm -hmm. with the six blind men. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. looking at the mm -hmm. uh, yes. elephant in different ways, they see a different part of the elephant. Yes. So I considered myself as the, as all the six blind men. And I wanted to see the elephant from all the sides. <laughs> so I uh, started to discover Absolutely. what actual Kathak was, its yes. philosophy. Yeah. Why Kathak? Yeah. What is its real form? Mm. And how is it that it is living through all these mm. years and it is still fresh with us and is still living? You know? And now I wanted it to give it a new life for the next generation. Mm. So Kumiban, you have mentioned somewhere that what did I do to Kathak? I gave it an acid bath. <laughs> I remember reading it somewhere. So Kumiban, would you uh, perceive yourself as a catalyst in this uh, traditional, in, uh, in the perspective of this uh, traditional dance form and how would you uh, perceive yourself as a catalyst? I wouldn't say you were absolutely wrong, mm -hmm. but uh, <laughs> um, you know, because I was a student of science, yeah. uh, I knew a little bit of physics mm -hmm. and of course maths mm -hmm. and I wanted to put my education to the use of Kathak. Okay. So where does the dance happen? It happens in the space around the dancer. Mm -hmm. Now when it happens, it's space has potency, mm -hmm. you know, and space has a lot of, uh, it gives us a lot of imagination mm -hmm. because it's so vast, mm -hmm. space is so vast and it, it is, as I said, its potency gives us so much of a strength yes. to create. Mm -hmm. And whenever you move your hand, you know, it is a design. Mm -hmm. For instance, yeah. for instance, mm -hmm. the Guru will say, put your hand out like that. Mm -hmm. So what did I do? Mm -hmm. I put my hand out like that. Mm -hmm. It's a movement. Mm -hmm. No. What did I do? I divided the space into before all this was one space. Mm -hmm. When I put my hand out, now it's two spaces. Mm -hmm. See, that is the way I was looking at space. Every time you put your hand out, it's not just to dance, but it is to make different okay. designs, mm -hmm. movements in space. Designs of space. Mm -hmm. Designs not only of the arms, but designs of the space around you. So that is how I started working and because there is no um, choreography mm -hmm. taught in India. Mm -hmm. We don't have that system yeah. at all. Mm -hmm. Nobody is teaching us choreography. Mm -hmm. But I put my own knowledge, mm -hmm. tried to put my own knowledge. I said all those years that I went to school, mm -hmm. I went to college, I went to university, what good was that? Just throw it back and mm -hmm. just dance? No, I must somehow put all that knowledge into the understanding of dance. Okay. Eight. Do, teen, cha, paan, che, saat, a, an, ek, do. Aur aiste aiste, ye jo jage hai, wo thodi thodi aap logon ki alag ho, aap log thoda thoda alag ho rahe hai. Jisko humne kehte hai potency of space, physics mein usko potency. Jo jage hai na aap ke beech ke, wo phail rahi hai. पहले तो आप बहुत पास पास में थे कैसे कितने ऐसे पास पास में थे ऐसे थे अब ये वाला मूवमेंट करके थोड़ा थोड़ा बढ़ हाँ हाँ ये जगह फैल रही है like to know that what were your likes and dislikes during this training phase uh, for Kathak? Uh, I would say uh, there were many likes. Okay. 
like uh, I liked the training, mm -hmm. I liked the way the gurus taught. Mm -hmm. Some of the gurus were also very loving when they mm -hmm. taught, you know, mm -hmm. and they treated us like children and uh, taught mm -hmm. very. But my biggest dislike mm -hmm. was the language they used. Mm -hmm. I mean, even if they wanted uh, to sort of uh, mm -hmm. uh, like you, mm -hmm. they would use a swear word. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. In the beginning, <laughs> I didn't understand them, mm -hmm. but later on, when I started to understand the meaning, I didn't like that. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. luckily, I didn't. Hmm. Learn any of that, so I don't use that <laughs> now. <laughs> I could have after listening to it for so many years. Hmm. Could you tell us more about your gurus? Guru can only be one. Hmm. You know, there can be many teachers and masters, yes. but what you call guru, you can only have one guru. Hmm. And I would say my guru was Shambhu Maharaj. Uh, he was from the Lakhno Gharana, as you know. Uh, Birju Maharaj's father was the eldest. Uh, mm. of the brothers mm. and Shambhu Maharaj was his younger brother, mm. Achan Maharaj, mm. Shambhu Maharaj, mm. Lachu Maharaj. Mm. And uh, because the Guru mm. also teaches along with the dance mm. many other things. He mm. brings into the dance mm. a whole environment mm. and he teaches you about the life pattern of that society. Mm through his language and through talking to us every day, mm -hmm. through the word, the way he swears at us, you know, mm -hmm. or through uh, what he eats or what he drinks, you know. Mm -hmm. the, one understands a little more where the dance lived mm -hmm. and how the dance lived along with those people mm -hmm. and how it's now living, you know. Mm -hmm. So that is the Guru. The other masters and teachers just treat you the training. You just add to your vocabulary. But dance is not only vocabulary, it's a whole culture. So the Guru teaches you that. Kumi Ben, going back uh, to your early years, because you came to Delhi after a, a long time of uh, training at Lahore and maybe a few performances abroad and all that. So what we would now like to know is that uh, how did this uh, journey as a performer begin? You've heard of the great uh, dancer Ram Gopal. Yes. Uh, he was once visiting India mm. and uh, he visited uh, our house for mm. dinner one day. Mm. I wasn't there, I was at school, I was in a boarding school, mm. but he, my, my mother being very enthusiastic, must have shown him <laughs> some <laughs> photographs of mine. And he said, oh, the girl looks very nice and all that. And so she says, when you go to Lahore, you must meet her, she's at the school. Mm -hmm. So he actually came to the school in Lahore to meet me. And I met him there mm -hmm. at the school. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was that. Mm -hmm. That was the end of that. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened after that. Mm -hmm. Many years later, after I finished my graduation in agriculture. Mm -hmm. I wasn't going to become a dancer. Mm -hmm. Perhaps I was going to become an agriculture scientist or mm -hmm. take a job somewhere. Mm -hmm. I read an advertisement in the paper. Mm -hmm. In Pune, mm -hmm. they wanted a, somebody in the agriculture department. I applied for it. Mm -hmm. I got called. Mm -hmm. So I went there with my father. I did the interview, which I thought was very good. And mm -hmm. they seemed very pleased with me. But I got rejected. Why? I was the only girl. Mm -hmm. They said, how can we have this very young girl among so many men? They were perhaps right in a way. But I was very angry. Just a few days mm -hmm. after that, mm -hmm. I was uh, at a railway station mm -hmm. in Bombay where I went to see my brother off who was going mm -hmm. to school. Mm -hmm. Someone tapped me on the shoulder. Mm -hmm. I turned around and it was a friend of my father's, Komalatta Dapta. Mm -hmm. I will tell you about her later. Mm -hmm. She uh, said, uh, what are you doing nowadays? Mm -hmm. I said, I'm doing nothing. Mm -hmm. So she said, do you want to do something? Mm -hmm. So I said, I would love to do something. Are you still dancing? I said, yeah, I'm studying. I'm not practicing my dance, but I dance mm -hmm. whenever given an opportunity. She said, you know that famous dancer Ram Gopal? Mm -hmm. He wants dancers. Mm -hmm girl dancers. Mm. Will you go? Mm. I said, where? She mm. said, to London. I mm. said, yes, mm. I'll go. Mm. And you know, in four days time, I was in London. Okay. At that time, it was so easy to get a visa, to get a flight or anything. Four days, I was in London. So here, a 
person trained in agriculture was suddenly into dance. So I will say I came into dance by default. <laughs> and here I am still here. After 60 years I am here. <laughs> I think uh, Kathak was very fortunate to have you here even if by default. <laughs> Kumiven, we would like to know more about this uh, tour with Ram Gopal to London and about your new experiences in London and your association with Ram Gopal. When I first arrived in London, mm -hmm. uh, I was only 18 mm -hmm. and I didn't have much experience of mm -hmm. dancing on a professional stage mm -hmm. and suddenly I was on the stage in London. Mm -hmm. But uh, uh, I think I managed quite well mm -hmm. and Ram was quite happy with me. Mm -hmm. And initially I used to do a Kathak solo mm -hmm. in his uh, mm -hmm. uh, company okay. and uh, uh, the critics used to call me the spinning girl because I used to spin a lot. Okay. <laughs> chakkar, huh, you know what chakkar, the, the yeah. chakkars in Kathak used to, so they used to call me the spinning girl. Mm. But slowly mm. I was promoted mm. until I became Ram's partner in his. Okay. Of course we toured not only in England, we mm. toured in America. Mm. We toured in France, mm. in Poland, mm. we went to Russia, to Sweden, to mm. many, many places and it was quite a wonderful experience. Apart from the dance and the stage, mm. the experience mm. of looking at those countries and the people and how they were trying to build their countries just after the war mm. was mm. A really a great experience. Okay. So. Uh, how did you then move away from that troupe? Uh, I didn't really move away. Mm. After two years, two and a half years, mm. we came back to uh, India mm. and I felt mm. that I was dancing a lot mm. in the Ram Gopal group mm. and Ram said I should learn a little Bharatanatyam also. Mm. And so he invited me to his house in Bangalore where I went mm. and I learned Bharatanatyam with Krishna Rao. Mm -hmm. And there are some photographs of me mm -hmm. and I have done on the stage Bharatanatyam mm -hmm. with Ram mm -hmm. who was actually a very good dancer. Mm -hmm. So to keep up with him I had really to work very hard. Mm -hmm. That was never a problem with me. Mm -hmm. I could always work very hard. I think uh, I was always born to work hard. To, you work, know, hard. to work hard. Without ever without ever wanting to know what the result will be. Mm. I never, it was never result oriented as such, mm. means where will I reach, it was just hard work mm. and work, you know. London features again in your life and that to a very important uh, destination London became because that is where you met your husband. Yes, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> so uh, now I'm curious to know, Kumudini Jaikar thi Kumudini Lakhya Banya. Ane Gujarat mm -hmm. So tell us more about your my own life. This phase, <laughs> yes, this is very uh, interesting. My husband, yes. uh, Rajnikanth Lakhya, mm -hmm. he was uh, studying law at Lincoln's Inn mm -hmm. in London mm -hmm. when we were touring. And Ram had an apartment, mm -hmm. and we all lived in that apartment. And in the evening, we used to rehearse. Mm -hmm. And my husband was very fond of music. In fact, he also used to play some instruments. Mm -hmm. He played uh, Jalatarang. Mm -hmm. He played Sarod and um, he played the Manipuri uh, Mridangam. Mm -hmm. He was very musical. Mm -hmm. And so he used to come to Ram's apartment in mm -hmm. the evening. He became quite friendly with Ram. So Ram used to say, you come in the evening. So after his classes and his uh, mm -hmm. studies, he used to come. And that's where I met him. Okay. But it was almost eight or nine years before we got married. Mm -hmm. We didn't get married soon. Mm -hmm. And that's how I came into Gujarat. And now I am a Gujarati. Yes, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Kumi, when you made Kathak popular in every Gujarati household, so uh, how would you, uh, how would you uh, relate to Gujarat today? Like uh, looking back in all those, uh, to all those years, were you very comfortable initially in Gujarat and with the Gujarati culture? And how did Gujarat treat you for that matter? Uh, I have been very happy here. Mm. and I call Gujarat my karma bhumi mm. Mm. and uh, I have worked here now for 50 years mm. in Gujarat. Mm. Mm. I have been here 50 years, 50 years. Yeah. and uh, being in Ahmedabad 
Mm. One thing about the people here, mm. they are non-interfering. Mm. They never interfere mm. with you. Mm. They are very appreciative of what, what you mm. do. Mm. And they allow you your own space to do what you like. Beautiful. And the people here are so very friendly. Mm. They are very friendly. Mm. And what I liked about them was they are vegetarians. Mm. And uh, you know, so sometimes we, when I used to go to Delhi and all, they say, what are you doing with all those vegetarians? You will vegetate. <laughs> So, but that was not the mm. uh, the problem at all. Mm. It's a very wholesome, clean mm. state mm. with uh, people with clean minds, you know. And if I was anywhere else, mm. I do not think that I would have been able to work mm. the way I did here. Mm. So, Kumi Ben, with, uh, with this new phase in your life, uh, you would have had to balance between your household and you were still training at Delhi. So how did you balance between the two, the career and the uh, home? Luckily for me, as I told you, my husband was a musician also, mm -hmm. apart, apart from being a lawyer. And he was very appreciative mm -hmm. of the work I was doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, he shared, in the house we shared all our duties. Mm -hmm. You know, it wasn't as if only the wife had to do all that. Mm -hmm. We used to share our mm -hmm. uh, home um, responsibilities, mm -hmm. responsibilities of the children, mm -hmm. you know, like taking the children to school or doing their homework with them or training them or taking them to swimming or whatever. Mm -hmm. We used to share all that. Yeah, yeah. In fact, when I um, toured, I toured yes, in, the, toured yeah, in India mm -hmm. as a solo dancer. Mm. That was the period when I was doing solo dancing mm. uh, and uh, he used to look after the home and the two children mm. and the children were very happy with him and he didn't find that there was any stress. Mm. Perhaps my children were very well behaved also. Yeah, <laughs> very well brought up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> अठारह और उन्नीस मार्च को रात ग्यारह बजे बायोस्कोप